Help, help, help. Oh. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with How High the Moon. <laughs> Friends, I can tell you how quick and easy Jell-O is to make, and I can tell you how thrifty it is, too. But when it comes to flavor, well, you'll simply have to try Jell-O yourself. A clear, shimmering mold of lime Jell-O will give you the idea in no time at all. You'll be struck first by its brilliant jewel-like color, so gay and inviting. And with your first taste, you'll notice something else, extra rich flavor, alive with all the tart, tingling goodness of real fresh limes. Yes, friends, Jell-O is a swell, satisfying dessert, no matter how you serve it, no matter which of Jell-O's six delicious flavors you choose. So try some tomorrow. The name Jell-O is printed on each package in big red letters. That's how you can be sure of always getting genuine Jell-O with its grand, extra-rich flavor, now better than ever. the moon played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, once again we continue with the description of our trip to Yosemite in Jack's Maxwell. As you remember, last week our little party finally reached the gates of Yosemite National Park only to find that it was closed for the night. Darn it. Being tired and weary, we decided to stay right there in the car until morning. And before we could nod off to sleep, we heard a clap of thunder and it started to rain. Here it comes. Well, we might as well get some sleep. Good night, fellas. Good night, Jack. Good night, Mr. Benny. Good night. Dennis, you don't have to put your pajamas on. Good night, Mary. Pleasant dreams. Keep them. Hmm. Oh, nuts. Everything has to happen to me. Well, it's your own fault. If you'd had a decent car, we'd have been here two days ago. Well, it can't be helped now. Good night, Mary. Good night. I didn't want to come to Yosemite anyway. I don't know how I ever let you talk me into it. All right, Mary, I'm trying to sleep. Come on up to Yosemite, Mary. We'll have a lot of fun. We'll play around in the snow. <laughs> Fine lot of fun. Mary, will you please be quiet? We're all trying to get a little sleep. My goodness. Some car. Oh. <laughs> Now, look, Mary, you might as well make the best of it. It's raining, the park gates don't open till 6 o'clock in the morning, so quit beefing and get some rest. Okay. Good night. Good night. Why'd you ever leave Waukegan? <laughs> Mary, would it make you feel any better if I killed myself right now, right in front of you? Look at Don. He's sound asleep already. Are you asleep, Don? Only my feet. Oh. <laughs> How about you, Dennis? Dennis, are you comfortable? Yeah, this is fun. Oh, you've been having fun ever since your nurse dropped you. <laughs> Boy, what I go through. I take the whole gang on a wonderful trip, and this is the thanks I get. Oh, well, I might as well try and get some rest. Oh, fine, listen to Rochester. <laughs> Rochester, close your mouth. <coughs> Rochester. Let me see them dice. <laughs> Rochester, we can't sleep with that snoring going on. I'm glad you woke me up, boss. I was right in the middle of a crap game. How'd you make out? Pretty bad. I can't even dream myself rich. <laughs> I'll go back to sleep. Maybe your luck will change. Good night. Good night, boss. Gee, I wish this rain would stop. Oh, well, it's good for the farmers. Six hours later. It is now the following morning, and our little group awakens to find themselves in a natural setting of breathtaking beauty. The sun is just rising over the snow-capped mountains. Birds are twittering in the giant redwoods. What a picture Mother Nature has painted. <laughs> <laughs> 
Come on, fellas. Come on, come on. Wake up, everybody. Come on, it's six o'clock. Wake up. Wake up, everybody. Stop with that bugle. Up, Mary, we gotta get going. You too, Don. Uh, what time is it, Jack? Six o'clock, come on, kids, up, up, up. Be happy and gay, it's a brand new day. Come, come. Oh, put your toupee on. <laughs> I don't wear any and snap out of it. And listen, everybody, I'm gonna give you just 10 minutes to be cheerful, or you'll have to pay for your own rooms. Are you up, Dennis? Yeah. Oh, boy, look at that scenery. Isn't it beautiful? It sure is. And look at those giant redwood trees. You know, Dennis, they're called sequoia. They are? Yes. You see, sequoia is an Indian word meaning heap big tree. Hey, throwing bull, when do we catch him breakfast? <laughs> we'll eat as soon as we get to the hotel. Come on, Rochester, we're ready to go. Okay, boss. How are you feeling? Fine, I broke even in that crap game. <laughs> That's good. Toot the horn, Rochester, so we can get to the ranger out here and pay our entrance fee into the park. Gee, the air is brisk up here, so snappy. Here comes the ranger now. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Up bright and early, I see. Yes, we want to get an early start. It's so beautiful here in the morning, especially the sun coming through the sequoias. You know, sequoia is an Indian word. Oh, really? Yes, it means big tree. And uh, Yosemite is an Indian word, too. You don't say. Yes, sir. You seem to be quite well informed about the park. Yes, I read all about it in this little booklet here. It explains everything. I know, I wrote it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> well, here's the $2 entrance fee. Now, which road do we take to get to the Iwani Hotel? That's on page five. Oh, I must have missed that. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Goodbye. Goodbye. Come on, Rochester, let's go. Where's Dennis? Oh. Uh, now, let's see. It, um, it says here in the book that the Awani Hotel is four miles straight ahead. We ought to make that today. We got an early start. Oh, we'll be there in half an hour. All ready to go, Mr. Benny? Yes, Dennis, hop in. Let's get started, Rochester. Okay, boss. Well, here we are inside the gate. Gosh, I never saw such beautiful scenery in my life. You know, man is so insignificant compared to the majestic grandeur of this supreme phenomena of nature. What page is that on? I made that up myself. Say, Jack, I can't understand why there isn't any snow here in the valley. Well, it's been a very mild winter, Don, but there's plenty of snow just a short drive from the hotel. It's up at Badger Pass. Are we all going skiing this afternoon, Mr. Benny? I don't know about you, fellas, but I am. Boy, I can't wait till I get into my ski outfit and go zooming down those hills 60 miles an hour. Whee! Take it easy, brittle bones. <laughs> don't worry. I'll surprise you, Mary Livingston. Say, boss, are you sure this is the right road to the hotel? I think so, Rochester. We just passed a sign back there. What did it say? It was printed, boss. I'm a longhand man. <laughs> well, stop the car and back up. There's no use getting out of our way. I don't see that sign. All clear, Don? Yeah, nobody behind us. Okay. About 20 yards more, Rochester. Gee, I didn't know this car could back up. Oh, sure, Dennis. It does everything. Just a little further back, Rochester. About five more yards. That's it. There's the sign. What does it say? Wilshire Bowl, 400 miles. <laughs> Darn that Phil Harris, he put that up when he got here last night. Well, there must be a sign around here somewhere. Here comes an Indian, Jack. He ought to be able to help us. Where? Oh, yes. Gee, he's got long black hair. And look at the beads on his jacket. <laughs> well, well, naturally. <laughs> well, naturally, uh, Dennis, that's how Indians dress. I'll talk to him. 
<clears throat> How? How do you do? Hmm. <laughs> uh, we like Ketchum Awani Hotel. The Awani? You continue on this road until you get to the bridge, and at the intersection, you bear right for approximately two miles. You can't miss it. Oh, thank you very much, Chief. Ugh. <laughs> well, it's about time. <laughs> Go ahead, Rochester. We're on the right road. Okay, boss. Well, two more miles and we'll be at the hotel. Oh, Jack, look over here to your right. Isn't that Brattlevale Falls? Where? Oh, yes. My goodness, what a magnificent sight. And there's Yosemite Falls to the left. Yep, that's it, all right. Gee, it's beautiful. Hey, fellas, look. Look straight ahead. There's Old Faithful, the famous geyser. Old Faithful? Why, Jack, Old Faithful is in Yellowstone. I don't care. There's a geyser right ahead of us, and it's shooting up. That's the radiator, boss. I lost the cap. <laughs> Oh, is that... Is that spouting again? Well, step on it, Roger. So soon we get the hotel, we'll fix it. So our little gang finally reached the Iwani Hotel, had breakfast, and went upstairs to change into their skiing outfits. Now, in just a moment, we'll take you to Jack's room at the Iwani. <laughs> Boy, I can hardly wait till I get up there in that snow. Oh, Rochester, where'd you put my ski pants? They're on the bed, Mr. Benny. Oh, yes. Well, come in here and help me get dressed. Ain't you going to take a bath first? Not till I get back from skiing. I got water in the tub. I don't care. I'm not going to take a hot bath and go out in the cold air. I poured in some bath salt. <laughs> Rochester, forget it. I'm not getting in that tub. I got your sailboat in. <laughs> Rochester, just mind your own business and help me get dressed. Gee, these, um... These, uh, ski pants look pretty good. And say, how do you like this lumberjack I've got on? Pretty loud shirt, isn't it, Rochester? That wouldn't even cause a ripple on Central Avenue. <laughs> well, I like it. Now, hand me my brown sweater. Here you are. Thanks. There. Now, hand me my gray sweater. Here you are. Thanks. There. there. Now, hand me my turtleneck sweater. Here you are. Well, now open the window. I want to try this stuff out. Okay. Ah, <sighs> That's enough. Close it. <laughs> Say, this uh, outfit ought to be all right. Do you think I need another sweater, Rochester? Not unless you got a friend. <laughs> I guess I'll be warm enough. Come in. Hello, Rochester. Hello, Miss Livingston. Where's Mr. Benny? Here I am, Mary. I got three sweaters on. How do I look? Still no chest. <laughs> That's so. I'm chesty enough. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Look what it says on your back there. Walk Egan Ski and Flexible Flyer Club. <laughs> Certainly, I've been a member ever since I was a kid. Anyway, you wait till I get up to Badger Pass. I'll show you some real skiing. That must be Don and Dennis. Come in. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, Mary. Hiya, Rach. Hello, Phil. Hello, Mr. Harris. Phil Harris, you get right out of this room. You're not a member of our party. Now, wait a minute, Jackson. We're all up here to have some fun. Let's have it together. Phil, I told you in Oakland that due to your smart aleck attitude, you weren't invited on this trip. Oh, come on, Jack. Don't be such a baby. Sure, let's kiss and make up. Phil, I wouldn't kiss you if I was an old maid, which I'm not, and you were a tramp, period. <laughs> So kindly leave this room. Now, wait a minute, Jackson. I said I was sorry, and besides, I'll pay my own expenses. I don't care if... Well... <laughs> all right. But if you get out of line once, I'm through with you. Oh, Rochester. Yes, boss? Bring the camera along. I want to get some good pictures of me in action. I don't know where it is. Well, find it. 
Say, Phil, have you been up to Badger Pass yet? Yes, I was up there this morning, and a terrible thing happened. I hadn't been there ten minutes when a guy broke his leg. Yikes! <laughs> what was that, Phil? I said some fella broke his leg skiing. Those hills are pretty steep, you know. Oh. Well, that's that. Shall I start packing for him? <laughs> no, of course not. He, uh, he broke his leg, huh, Phil? Yeah. Well, come on, Jackson. Let's get started. Okay. Gee, I don't know if it'll be any fun if there isn't any snow up there. You oh, can... there's plenty of snow over 41 inches. That's what I mean. It's too deep. You can't <laughs> ski in deep snow. There's no fun in that. Gee. I'll tell you what. Let's go tomorrow. Now, listen, Jack Benny. I rode for three days in that Maxwell to get here, and all I heard was ski, ski, ski from morning to night. Well. And I'm going to see you in action if I have to drag you up to that mountain and push you down. Well. <laughs> Bravo, Miss Limson. You keep quiet. We don't need a cheering section around here. Come in. Well, we're ready. You all set, Jack? Not quite, Don. Oh, hello, Mr. Harris. Hiya, kid. Well, Phil Harris. So you and Jack got together, huh? Yeah, we're buddies now, eh, Jackson? Yeah, we're buddies, all right. Well, come on, Jack. You've got all your clothes on. Aren't you going skiing? Yeah, but what's all this rush, rush, rush? We're supposed to be on a vacation. Let's relax. My goodness. Listen to the guy that blew the bugle. <laughs> Well, I don't think we ought to go up to Badger Pass until we've had some lunch. And then those of us who want to go skiing can go skiing. Those of us who want to take a nap can take a little nap. After all, this is a vacation. Don't try to get out of it, Jack. Right after lunch, you're going skiing with us. Oh, boy, that'll be fun. Oh, boy, that'll be time. <laughs> That's all he knows. Well, come on, fellas. Let's go down to the dining room. Come on, let's hurry up. Yeah, let's get going. Come on with me, will you? Say, Phil, about this fellow that broke his leg, was he going very fast or was he just showing off or something? Huh? Well, I'll tell you, Jack, it was like this. Mm -hmm. He started down the big hill all right, but uh -huh. when he got almost halfway, he seemed to trip and lose his balance. I see. Well, he kept going down faster and faster, and the first thing... Anyway, folks, we all enjoyed a hearty lunch, topped off by America's favorite gelatin dessert, tempting and appetizing jello. We each had one of its six delicious flavors, and oh boy, was it good. Yum, yum. <laughs> Immediately after lunch, we piled into the Maxwell and started out for Badger Pass. Hey, uh, Phil, give us a little time to get there, will you? Okay, Don. Hit it, boys. <laughs> Badger Pass. Wow, look at all that snow. Yep, and there's the ski house right ahead of us. Yeah, let us off here, Rochester, and park the car. Okay, Mr. Harris. Gee, look at all those skiers coming down the hill. Oh, boy, isn't that a thrill? Yeah, whee! Shut up. <laughs> we yet. Come on, everybody, let's yeah, go. let's get going. We're going to go. Rochester, Rochester, you stay here and watch the car. I'd kind of like to walk around and see what's going on. Okay, Rochester, but don't get lost in the snow. Who, me? <laughs> Oh, 
That's right, that's right. <laughs> Say, fellas, you go ahead. I'm going to stop in the ski house and get a bite to eat. You just finished your lunch. Well, I want to get something hot to drink. I got to chill. We're coming with you. You ain't going to give us the slip. All right, come along. Who's trying to give you the slip? Say, there are a lot of people here, aren't there? Yes, this is a very popular place. Oh, miss? Yes, sir? I'd like a cup of hot chocolate, please. It'll take a little time to make it. Would you just as soon have coffee? No, I'll wait. A cup of hot chocolate, please. Hey, Jack, here comes the ski instructor. I want you to meet him. Hey, Larson. Hello, Mr. Harris. I see you're back again this afternoon. Sure. Say, how's that fella coming along that broke his leg this morning? Well, it was a pretty bad fracture, but he'll be all right in a few weeks. It was his own fault, you know. He was a beginner and just wouldn't listen. That's the trouble with those beginners. They think they know everything. Yeah, they think they know everything. <laughs> few weeks, eh? Oh, uh, Larson, uh, this is Jack Benny of the Waukegan Ski Club. How do you do, Mr. Benny? It's his own fault, all right, if he wouldn't listen. Oh, pardon me, pardon me. Uh, how do you do? Glad to know you. So you're an old-timer, eh, Mr. Benny? He's over 21 twice, if that's what you mean. <laughs> Mary. Well, I haven't been on skis for quite a while, Mr. Larson, but I guess I can still hold my own. <laughs> uh... Uh, by the way, uh, this is Mary Livingston, Don Wilson, and Dennis Fracture. I mean, Day. Uh, Dennis Day. How do you do, folks? Well, it's a pleasure to know you, Mr. Larson, indeed. Oh, miss, is my hot chocolate ready? Not quite. Oh, no hurry. Say, Jack, you're wasting the whole afternoon. Let's go skiing. Sure, come on, Jack. Let's get going. That's right. You can have your hot chocolate later. Yeah. Dennis, don't try to always run things. <laughs> My hot chocolate ready yet, miss? Not yet. Oh. Come on, Jack. Now listen, Mary. Well, there's the ski lift ready to start up. Come on, everybody. I'll go with yeah, you. Yeah, oh, yeah. Come, come on. on. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Oh, Mr. Larson, do we go uh, clear up to the top of that hill? Yes, it's about a thousand feet. Well, this will be just like old times, eh, Mary? You're on your own, Bajork. <laughs> hmm. Okay, Mr. Larson. Up we go. <laughs> Gee, it's high up here, isn't it? Yes, Mr. Benny, this mountaintop is 8,100 feet above sea level. Gee whiz. Now, Mr. Larson, when I get my skis on, should I... Mary, stop throwing those snowballs. I'm not throwing them at you. I don't care. You'll hit somebody. Uh, Mr. Larson, when I get my skis on, should I... Hey, try... Jackson! What? Ouch! <laughs> Darn you, Phil Harris, you hit me right in the face. Sorry, so long, Jackson! Gee, look at him go down that hill. What a show-off. Now, uh, what were you saying, Mr. Benny? I said when I put my skis on, Mr. Hey, Larson... Hey, Jack, I'm going to join Phil. Come on, Dennis. See you later, Mr. Benny. Whee! <laughs> Say, those guys are all right. I didn't know they could ski so well. Uh, uh, don't you think you'd better put your skis on, Mr. Benny? Yes, I might as well. I'll be with you in a minute. Excuse me. Say, Miss Livingston, I'm a little worried. Are you sure Mr. Benny belongs to a ski club? All I know is what I read on his back. <laughs> but he's, he's wearing such an outlandish outfit. What's he got that turtleneck sweater on for? That's in case he hits a tree and pull his head in. <laughs> well... Here I am, Mr. Larson, ready to go. Yeah, so I see. But there's just one thing wrong, Mr. Benny. You've got your skis on backwards. I have? Oh, yes. What's the matter with me? The, the curved end goes in front, doesn't it? Yes, that seems to be the vogue this year. <laughs> imagine. Imagine me making a mistake like that. I've got a good mind to punish myself by not skiing at all. <laughs> I don't know what you're laughing for. You don't look happy. Well, I can't jump up and down with my skis on. Well, turn them around, Mr. Benny, and we'll get you started. Okay. Uh, pardon me, young man. Are you going to start down the hill? No, no, not yet. Uh, then I'll go. Yippee! <laughs> wow, look at her go. Who is that, Mr. Larson? Uh, that's my grandmother. She's getting in shape for the Olympics. Oh. <laughs> 
She's a spry old lady, isn't she, huh? Well, I got my skis on right, I think, Mr. Larson. <laughs> I guess that's enough for the first day, huh? <laughs> well, I think you ought to go down once this afternoon. Oh. Now, follow me. There's a good place to start right over there. Yes, sir. Now, remember, keep your feet close together, your knees slightly bent, and if you want to slow down, just point your toes in. Oh, that'll be easy for me. I'm naturally a little pigeon-toed. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, for a full stop, you'll turn to the side, which you undoubtedly know. Oh, yes. Anyway, if I forget, I have an instruction book here in my pocket. That's fine. At 60 miles an hour, he's going to read a book. <laughs> Never mind. Well, here I go. So long. Good luck, kid. I'll be all right, I guess. Well, here I go. I better give you a little push. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Mr. Larson. Now, wait a minute. Whoop! I'm moving. Goodbye. Good luck. Oh, my goodness. I'm really going. <laughs> Gee. Say, this isn't so bad. <laughs> Whoop! I nearly went over that time. Oh, boy, I'm sure going fast now. Oh, my goodness, I forgot how to slow down. Hey, Jackson, Jackson, take it easy. Turn to the right, Jack, turn to the right. Nuts to turn to the right. How do I stop these things? Look out, Jackson, look out. You're going to hit that ski house. I know. What'll I do? What'll I do? Turn to the right, for heaven's sake. Oh, my goodness, I'm heading right for it. Stop me, somebody, stop me. I'm going right through the ski house. Ah! <laughs> With nothing. I want a doctor. Mary, Phil, Don, Dennis. Ooh. So that, ladies and gentlemen, ended Jack's first day of skiing at Yosemite. Will we continue with our adventures in this great national park next week, or will we be back home in Hollywood? Who knows? Tune in next Sunday night and find out. I'm going to play Phil. <laughs> Right now in homes all over the country, a lot of boys and girls are looking forward to a swell party next Thursday on Washington's birthday. And a lot of mothers are thinking about what to serve. Well, that's where we step in with a grand suggestion, Washington's birthday salad, something new and mighty grand. Sweet red cherries, spicy stuffed olives, combined in a shimmering mold of vivid cherry jello and served on crisp green lettuce. Delicious? Oh, you bet. And easy to make. Dissolve one package of cherry jello and one pint of hot cherry juice and water. Chill until slightly thickened. Fold in one and one half cups of canned sweet red cherries cut in quarters and half a cup of sliced stuffed olives, then mold until firm. And there is a treat. Bright with glowing color and rich with tempting flavor. So ask your grocer for cherry jello and make a Washington's birthday salad. the last number of the 20th program in the current Jell-O series, and we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. How do you feel, Jack? Oh. I see. Good night, folks. J-E-L-L oh. And here's more fun and enjoyment for you. Tune in every Tuesday night for another swell half hour of Jell-O entertainment, the famous Aldrich family. See your local paper for time and station. Take about, Jack. Take about, fellas. Do I Love You, Do I? is from the show Dewberry Was a Lady. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>